Hi, I'm Susan Sharp, and I'm here today with La Follette native and Jeopardy! champion, Brian Henniger. Brian, thank you so much for being here. It is a pleasure, and it is a privilege. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you. So, you're 40 years old. Yes. Okay, you're a La Follette native. Yes, I am. And you just won over $70,000 over the course of four days on Jeopardy! Um, if you say that's what I did, it still doesn't seem real, but it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing to, uh, to, to know that I did that, but that is, uh, that is what just happened. You, and you still seem so surprised by it. A little bit, because, you know, I never thought I'd ever get on Jeopardy. I've loved it my whole life, but I never thought the day would come when I got the call to go out to L.A. to play. So it just, you know, all of this just seems like a bonus. It just seems incredible to me. Let's talk back through that. You've always wanted to be on Jeopardy. Yes. You were on another game show at one point. Yes, I was on the uh, daytime syndicated version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire back in 2016. Okay. Chris Harrison was the host of that show. Uh, they filmed that out in Las Vegas, and I won $30,000 on that show. Okay. So uh, that was great. That kind of uh, fulfilled my desire to go on a game show at that time. But, you know... If I never got on another one, I could say, hey, I was on one, so there you go. This, but I have, I'd always wanted to try out for Jeopardy because I've always been a fan of the show since I was a little bitty boy. Um, I've been watching game shows about as long as I can remember. I just, I've always loved them. I've, I've loved, you know, the whole process of watching one. I've loved how they work. I love the lights, the music, the games, the hosts, and the prizes. I just, I've always had a fascination with them. And I always want, but, but for some reason, Jeopardy was the one I always wanted because that's like the gold standard for quiz games. If you can, if you can just get on Jeopardy, that means you've achieved something. And so I always want to just have an opportunity. My, my dad used to always say to me, Brian, I just want you to get your shot. That's all he ever wanted. And he prayed every day that I'd get a shot for it. And uh, I did not throw away my shot, and I made the most of it. Well, tell us how you got that shot. Okay, so the way it works is, as some of, as the viewers may know, the, there's something online called the Jeopardy Anytime Test, which is on the Jeopardy website. You can take it at any time you want. It's a 50-clue test, and each clue is in a different category. So it's 50 clues in 50 categories. And they say the, the, um, the passing grade is 35. Uh, it can be more or less than that. That's more or less like the the benchmark of the of it and I took it every year nothing had really happened and then this past year so what happened was there were some pretty big names who've worked in the game show industry and in the trivia quizzing industry and there is a quizzing industry believe it or not I did not know that oh yeah uh, trivia quizzes are big business now in uh, uh, like bars and clubs and things and uh -huh. it's, it's very popular and they're putting together this thing called the game show boot camp out in Las Vegas, which was meant to be like a fan convention for game show fans. And one of the things that they did was they made an announcement that if you've taken the anytime test and you passed it, you can qualify for an in-person audition at the boot camp. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I signed up. I got my flight in my hotel room. I took the anytime test and I passed it. So I was actually, it's a funny little story. I was out in Panama City Beach, Florida seeing my friend Cindy on my birthday for mm -hmm. a vacation. And they just moved out there, and we went out to the beach. I come back from the beach, and I look at my phone, and I get an email from Jeopardy saying, your test scores are good enough. We want you to do an actual audition test once you get back home. And that is just like the test online, but it's 50 clues in 50 categories, but you're doing it in front of a producer and you have to get 35 or more. Okay. If you don't get 35, you're not considered. So I took the test, thought I did reasonably okay on it. Didn't think, I mean, I, in my brain, I thought, well, I think I did it well enough to pass, but I wasn't sure. So I had a couple of days where I was kind of nervous. Mm -hmm. Well then, um, about a week after that, I got a call from them saying you passed the second test you've gotten your call back. We're going to do an in-person audition in Las Vegas. So that was surreal. <laughs> uh, we, I flew out to Vegas and got to meet some of my friends. Mm -hmm. I did the audition. Uh, we, the audition is you're standing in front of the actual contestant producer for the show. Okay. My name John Barra and a few other people. And we've got the buzzers in our hands and we're practicing playing the game. And 
Apparently they liked what they saw because they said, you're in the contestant pool now, all of you are. At any point in the next 18 months, we could call you to come on the show. So I figured, well, I gave it the best shot. There's nothing else I can do. I said a prayer, enjoyed the rest of my trip, flew back to Tennessee. Right around Christmas, I get a call from uh, the producers of Jeopardy, and they say, Brian, you're in. We want you in Los. We, we want you in Los Angeles. You're going to be on Jeopardy. That had to be an incredible Christmas present. Oh gosh, it was <laughs> the best Christmas present ever. Just shocked can, the yeah. just shocked the daylights out of me, and that's how it happened. And well, the rest is history. Let's talk about being on the show. I've watched it enough to know those are some difficult questions, difficult categories. Was there any category that you were a little more nervous about? You said this may not be my strongest one. The ones I was worried most about were what was Shakespeare. Okay. And world geography. Okay. Those are my two biggest blind spots in trivia. And I tried to do some studying before it happened. But really the 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 beauty of Jeopardy is that every game, there's thirteen categories. And 12 of those have five different clues in them. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so that's 60 clues. And in your mind, you're thinking, if there's one category I don't know a lot about, there's going to probably be one that I do know something about. And which one were you confident that you knew? Clearly, you knew current novelists. Current novelists, obviously. <laughs> you knew that one. That got you <laughs> that your got first, the first win. first win, yes. The ones I was excited about was uh, anything like with movies or television, uh, U.S. history, and uh, wordplay categories. Like, you know, starts with this letter uh -huh. or rhymes with this. Wordplay ones are kind of a puzzle you can kind of work them out in your brain a little bit but the thing is it's all quick on the buzzer so you have to do it in just a moment and those are the ones I was happy to see on the board but you you really just take each one as it comes and you hope you do the best and hope you play the best and uh, well, apparently it worked all right you went to Valley View I did which middle school did you go to I follow middle school and then Campbell County High School Campbell County High School so you are uh, Campbell County educated Campbell County born and bred and there you are winning at Jeopardy yeah, it happened. It did. <laughs> well, um, so as you stepped onto it for the first time, because this is this was your dream, this is what you always wanted to do, what were your thoughts when you finally took that stage? Well, I'll tell you this. When I walked inside the the Alex Trebek stage, that's what they call the studio now. Yes. It was it was it was surreal because you have to walk because it's this big film studio on the Sony lot. It used to be the Columbia Pictures lot in Culver City. And so you're walking, because uh, our green room, because of COVID restrictions, the, we didn't have a green room in the studio. Our green room was the Wheel of Fortune studio. For s distancing and yeah. all that. Okay. So we had to sit in the stands. And that is that was surreal by itself, because you're sitting there in these stands, and the wheel is right there. The actual wheel from Wheel of Fortune. Did you want to go spin it? Every one of us did. <laughs> did you actually do it? They wouldn't let us. Oh, we were so disappointed. I would be disappointed. I there, would want to spin the wheel. <laughs> there, were, there, there were 14 of us in there, and every one of us asked the producers who were keeping an eye on us, hey, can we go spin the wheel? And they wouldn't let any of us spin the wheel. Well, shoot. They weren't going to let you do that. Yeah. So we walked in from the, uh, from this, from the Wheel of Fortune stage. We walk across this street. We walk into the Alex Trebek stage, and you walk in, and you go through this corridor, and there it is. There's the board. There's the host lectern. There's the contestant lecterns. And you're like, this is on TV. I've been watching this for my whole life. I'm actually here. And at first, it didn't seem like it was really happening. I swear, it seemed like it was an absolute, okay, my, my memory is like, this is a dream I'm having right now. But you walk in, you see everything, and you're like, I'm right there. And so it was kind of overwhelming at first. But it was it was just like, you know what, even if I didn't win anything, I'm here, I got to be on the stage, I got to play the game. That was it's clear that clearly I wanted to win some money. But that that, that experience was worth the trip. Just being able to stand on the Alex Trebek stage. Where Alex Trebek was. And that was just that was an absolute thrill for me. Well, I can tell you, we were all back here at home. Of course, you were back home by then. You taped in January. We taped January the seventeenth, and it aired in April. So we had. So it was kind of a funny story. I've been wondering how did you stay quiet that whole time. It wasn't easy. I can't imagine. It wasn't easy. I'll tell you this. Uh, my friend Alex Braun, 
who's a very dear friend of mine, tells this great story. We all got together for a watch party, the first, the, on my first ever appearance. Uh -huh. And me, all my friends, because he got the show early in the day and he'd already seen it. And he said, Brian, you don't know how hard it was to keep this a secret all day from everybody. I said, oh, that's nice. I had to keep it a secret for two and a half months. <laughs> don't talk to me about two hours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, I my sister knew because she was there with me. Uh -huh. um, I, my mom and dad, I was a lot, because I, I still know them very closely i could tell them but they were sworn to secrecy but only because they were your parents they yeah, got to find out exactly but other than that at work everybody i couldn't tell a soul so it's like everyone knows i'm going to be on jeopardy i can't tell them how i did because he want them to watch obviously right but it was uh it was it was an experience like nothing else in this planet and it was awesome well the whole town was behind you and they were we were excited i know that locally people were watching as after you won that first night and the hometown support started to swell behind you talk to me about that what was that like that was incredible uh, that was absolutely incredible because you know i would be going to work every day the, 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 so funny the first day that i'd won i walked into my office at work in, in in knoxville and i walked inside and i got a round of applause from all my friends just for walking in at just work just for walking in because i'd won on jeopardy <laughs> And it was crazy coming back home. My mom is telling me, Brian, all of our relatives are proud of you. I'm getting emails from people who live around La Follette. People say to me, you know, you did such a great job. You're making La Follette look so good. We're all proud of you. It was just, it was absolutely insane. And then you won again. I won again. And what, what happened after that? It just got bigger. It got bigger. I mean, and I knew that my fourth game was the one I was going to lose on which made me kind of sad well that's nothing to be ashamed of no. at all though and i was a little afraid i think well they're going to be upset with me but no everyone was so proud and everyone kept telling me even all of my friends who are big game show fans said brian you represented us well you did i was and that was something that really meant a lot to me that people said that they were proud of me and i i looked i was a good role model for campbell county or la follette or my friends i've never been called that before and I'm thinking, you know, this is this is bigger than I thought it was going to be. And I'm so, so blessed beyond words that I got the chance to do it. And I'm just, I am over the moon completely. Well, we're all excited and happy for you. But let me ask you this. Have you been able to go in the store yet and not be recognized? Not yet. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I'm sure it'll happen at some point, but I'll go in and people will say, hey, good job on Jeopardy. And I say, thank you. And uh, I was at work. One of my one of my bosses said, Brian, you've got to tell me how the next episode goes. You're going to give me a heart attack. I said, I promised Sony I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> so can't you wait a few hours? She goes, no. <laughs> Well, she should have done the online investigation like we did because we yeah. found it on YouTube. Yeah, on uh, the thing because it's indication being how it is. Yes, so we found it there. So um, you won seventy thousand two hundred and two dollars. Uh huh. Any idea what you're going to do with any of that money? Well, I'm going to donate uh, five hundred dollars of it to a charity. Okay. That is very uh, important to me right now. Mm hmm. Um, called the Anti Defamation League. Mm -hmm. I promised I would. Yes. I'm going to do that. That was one of your promises on Twitter. Yeah, I said I was going to do it. Um. Other than that, uh, really kind of boring stuff. I'm going to pay off my car, pay off my credit card. Okay. Um, uh, probably get me a new uh, a new computer and phone because I need one. Mm -hmm. I was told by a lot of people that I needed to get me a new suit, so I'm actually going to get me. <laughs> so I'm going to get. So I'm going to get me a couple of new suits with my your, sister. Well, for your next game show appearance, maybe are you going to keep trying? Uh, I'll, I'll keep trying, but I'd like to have a nice suit to have, you know, for special events. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I just intend to live my best life and help my family out, help my friends out. I want to do some nice things for a few friends of mine who were invaluable and helped me prepare for this. They, um, the, the one friend who I really want to say did the best for me is a guy named Tom Zaleski, who's mm -hmm. a buddy of mine from out in Utah. He is the guy who, number one, always kept giving me um, advice on how, on how to do the buzzer timing. He, we worked on buzzer timing for like a month and how to do trivia flashcards and the wagering and everything else. He was like, kind of like if Jeopardy was a Rocky movie, he was Mickey okay. in the Rocky movie. He Good was my analogy. trainer. Yeah. He was my trainer. And, uh, but I, I had so many friends who helped me out. So many friends who did so much for me. So I, I want to do something nice for a few of them. 
other than that, I want to travel a little bit, but I also just want to, you know, just live my best life and uh, enjoy enjoy this blessing from the Lord. I, I believe it was a blessing from the Lord. I really believe it was. Well, I think we'd have to agree with you on that. Thank you. Let's talk about that first game. Okay. <laughs> you won. You answered the John Grisham question. Uh-huh. And then the next thing we know, there is this amazing look of surprise on your face. Yes. Let's talk. It kind of went viral, didn't it? It did. It uh, went viral on the uh, on this website called the, called the Jeopardy fan, called it the best reaction. <laughs> there's a YouTuber, uh, sorry, there's a Twitter user called One Eclectic Mom, who's the Jeopardy fashionista. Because this thing is, she'll critique everyone's clothes in a very positive yes. way. And I've got to know her. She's a sweet woman. She's from Chattanooga, okay. actually. Just down the road. Yeah. She said, if they do another Jeopardy honors this year, that has to be listed as the best reaction to a win in Jeopardy history. <laughs> what were you thinking? Because, I mean, you looked genu- I mean, you looked very surprised. Well, I wasn't so much surprised. I wasn't sure of the answer, but it was an educated guess. Okay. Because if the, the clue said the things that caught his ire, and he mentioned were the uh, the unjustly, uh, what was it, the plight of the unjustly convicted and the and big tobacco. Big tobacco, yes. Well, I remember, and this is going to sound the weird, because one of the things about trivia is that you get facts from the weirdest places. I got a fact, I, when I was in middle school, I was reading People Magazine. And they were serializing a chapter from a book he did called Runaway Jury. Yes, I remember it. Which is a which is a novelization based around the big tobacco trials mm-hmm. uh, with Laurel R. Tobacco. And I just happened to remember that. So I put two and two together. Book review has to be a so it has to be something recent. And you know, I just kind of connected a few dots. Well, John Grisham is probably a good answer as any. I put the answer down. Seemed reasonably confident, but you're never really sure of anything up there. And the reason why I reacted the way I did when I won, for about two weeks, I had been having these recurring nightmares before I flew to L.A. that I was going to make a fool of myself on oh, Jeopardy. No. And that just affects your brain. I uh-huh. think I'm going to I'm going to finish in the negative. I'm going to make a fool out of myself. It's going to be absolutely terrible. I kept having these over and over and over again. And I tried to shut them out, you know. So we got up there and I played reasonably well, had the lead heading into final. When the other two players got it wrong, when Ken said my name and said, yes, Brian, you're right. That all about, first of all, about a thousand pounds of weight went off of my shoulders. And I'm thinking, first of all, oh my goodness, I've won. And secondly, I didn't make a fool out of myself. <laughs> so every positive emotion you could possibly have just hits you like a hundred miles an hour. And Ken had the best reaction to it. He said, Brian, as I think is slowly beginning to dawn on him, is the Jeopardy champion. <laughs> you could see it was pure joy on it your was. face. It I was mean, joy, the- adulation. It was every, every positive emotion you can feel. I felt it just right then. Well, thank you for coming by and talking to us today. I do have one question before you leave. Please. Um, Campbell County's leading news source. What is WLAF? That's right, Brian. There you go. Thank you again for coming by. It's been so good to talk to you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck.